Welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Voss, and Spider Man Homecoming starring Iron Man was the MCU bro hug that brought tears to our eyes in Infinity War and Endgame. As a movie I have rewatched for Easter eggs before, including yeah. winning the director's Howard the Duck Hunt, I was blown away how many overlooked visual details were still hidden throughout this great, great film. So many subtle connections to the Avengers, so many cool visual details. There's no time, we gotta dive in. Okay, the film opens on a kid's drawing of the Battle of New York, reflecting how this film is a youth's view of the MCU. Down to Hawkeye getting Mike wazowski Adrian Toomes and his crew clean up the Chitauri tech in Grand Central at the foot of Avengers Tower, including the same Leviathan that Thor and Hulk took down. Toomes hulks out on the damage control guy. Maybe next time don't overextend yourself. What'd you say? Yeah. He's right. I overextended myself. Yeah, whistling there was Bryce, who later makes the same mistake with Tombs and gets a whistle signaling his KO. I'm just saying, maybe your wife would like to know where you really get your money from. We jump eight years later, ugh, which Marvel authorities later confirmed was a mistake. This prologue is set in 2012, and right after Civil War would be four years later. See, I think the original version of the prologue had no time jump title at all, since that's a weird thing to do before the main title anyway. But a last minute studio note worried audiences wouldn't get the timeline leading to this rushed last minute edit with no fact checking. Tomb's Vulture body armor is the salvaged Shatari armor that we saw on Hydra soldiers in Age of Ultron, making him a scavenger of scavengers, the ultimate vulture persona. And later, his helmet hair and flight jacket evoke his comics look. See, both the villain and hero of Homecoming are self-made, really embracing the classic DIY soul of Peter Parker. His Stark Tech suit is overpowered, that's the point. Deep down, it's a coming-of-age tale from toys to tech. And Peter wins, ultimately because he becomes the more responsible self-made hero. Michael Giacchino once again composes the music. He introduces Avengers Tower with major chords. And then he inverts it to minor chords with tombs. It's time we change too. To hint at the Avengers' dark consequences. Chikino also adapts the 60s Spider-Man animated series into the orchestral theme over the titles. Peter's travel video includes a shot of the World's Fair, a callback to the Stark Expo in Iron Man 2, which was later retconned to be Peter Parker's first appearance in the MCU. Robert Downey Jr.'s name in the end credits features art that recreates that moment. After the Civil War airport battle, Happy and Tony drop Peter off. At the Stark internship retreat. Everyone was impressed. Come on! See, Happy is, is hoping to get bumped up to asset management. He was forehead of security and- Tony's forehead of security joke calls back Iron Man 3. Is this forehead of security? And notice that seconds before Happy honked, Peter's eyes darted left. And unlike Tony, Peter doesn't jump at the honk. A little example of Peter's spidey sense. He saw that near crash ahead of them. Happy also struggles with Peter's heavy suitcase, yet Peter carries it no problem. And we switch from the point of view of home video to objective framing right on the key reveal here. Happy, can you give us a moment? You want me to leave the Why car? Why'd you grab Peter's case out of the trunk? I can keep the suit. This transition locks in our picture of Peter Parker, still learning the responsibility of toys versus tech and the value of being self-made. That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. And of course, in Endgame, those two Avengers finally get there. Peter's texts to Happy include How's Black Widow, or should I say Natasha, and another one about quitting marching band, which Tony later uses to catch him in the lie. Uh, I'm at band practice. That's odd. Happy told me you quit band six weeks ago. So they were reading these. Aww. Also, notice the tiny crack in Peter's screen. Each time we see his phone throughout the movie, the screen gets more and more damaged, showing Peter's increasing threat level and forming a spider web a crack. So what you did there. The Midtown Morning News is hosted by Betty Brant, name of the Daily Bugle Betty Brant from the comics, and Jason Ionello, a friend of Flash Thompson in the comics. We also meet Flash Thompson, whose license plate reads Flash Drive. <laughs> Little clue that the plates in this movie are definitely worth looking at. The school's mural shows Howard Stark and a photo of Bruce Banner. It's among the famous physicists in the classroom. There's an extra who briefly looks at camera. And Peter ogles Liz. I'll knock out the basic bones of the Death Star in my place, and and then I'll come by afterwards because for the most part, the difficult thing will be just the base of it. That'd be great. 
Yeah, Peter's tuning out Ned, telling him when he's gonna come over later, which is why Peter forgets Ned would be in his room and accidentally outs himself. Idiot. Peter answers a problem about the physics of pendulums, signaling that this guy is constantly calculating his swing trajectories when he's on the streets. Also, on the cargo plane later, he applies quick thinking jet propulsion physics in order to turn the plane. Nerd. The YouTube video he's watching is uploaded by Rocket Robinson 67, which is a real YouTube channel created by the production with BTS videos, including a mention of a rival school with the Asgardian mascot. The girls basketball team takes on the Flatbush as Guardians this Thursday night. The Midtown mascot is the Tigers, a nod to Mary Jane's classic, go get him Tiger to Peter Parker. In this video URL is actually the same URL of the second homecoming trailer that dropped months before. And on the recommended bar, there's a video up next, Alan Tutorial, a great channel with surrealist how-to videos, and a bunch of short films from Waverly Flams, director John Watts, NYU filmmaking group. Peter mixes his own web fluid, it's labeled 3.01, maybe a nod to this being the third live-action Spider-Man. His academic decathlon group includes Michelle, later revealed as MJ, Cindy Moon, aka Silk from the comics, and it's led by Mr. Harrington, whom Kevin Feige confirmed was the same character as Martin Starr's grad student in Hulk. Peter awkwardly changes into his Stark suit, which vacuum seals to shrink wrap around him so he could have worn his clothes under it, but I guess he didn't want the lumps or the awkward movement. Actually, the next big question will break down the more awkward elements of Peter's suits and lots of superhero suits, check it out. But notice that after webbing his backpack to the dumpster, garbage juice spills all over it. Peter's bike sign text placement forces his use of a hyphen, as he does later on Tomb's sign. Remember kids, Spider-Man is hyphenated, except in the titles of some of our YouTube videos because the uh, stupid algorithm makes it harder to find if we punctuate properly. When he helps the lady who later gives him a churro, behind them is the churro cart that they get it from, Stanley cameos, and the guy with the boombox is a cameo from the train punk in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Peter stops ATM robbers with Avengers masks, like the moment in the Ultimate comics. Oh, you're the Avengers! What are you guys doing here? <laughs> Thor, <laughs> Hulk, good to finally meet you guys. Thor and Hulk weren't in Civil War, so Peter didn't meet them. And he has Thor punch Hulk, payback for Hulk's punch in Avengers. Behind Peter is a sign for identity theft, like the robbers stealing the Avengers identities here. Now they use the anti-gravity gun and Peter's enhanced grappling rips up the floor tiles. And he follows the screenwriting adage, save the bodega cat. You know, while Peter was in that bodega, one way to bounce back would have been swiping a can of Bang Energy. Thanks to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Every can of Bang is 16 ounces and it contains 300 milligrams of caffeine, sugar-free, and has zero calories yet. It tastes great, with over 20 different flavors to choose from. One of those great flavors is Bangster Berry. Which berries, you might ask? The Bangster ones. But the most delicious ones as well. See, there are mornings when I was up late the night before writing a full movie breakdown and I'm really dragging. A can of Bang Energy helps pick me up so I can, you know, Bangster my way through more work. That didn't really work, but you get the idea. They have caffeine-free beverages for folks sensitive to caffeine or want to drink one at any time of the day. Check out Bang on Instagram. You can get 25% off your order at bang-energy.com when you use the code NEWROCKSTARS25. There you can buy cans of Bang Energy, including their sweet tea and keto coffee flavors. You can also get clothing, fitness supplements, all kinds of stuff to be your best Bang self. <laughs> Thanks again to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Get 25% off at bang-energy.com using the code NEWROCKSTARS25. So when Peter calls happy, the graffiti behind him reads Bagley, a nod to Mark Bagley, the comic book artist who worked on a number of Spider-Man issues. Happy and Tony's dummy robot clear out the tower because it is sold. Now, in Far From Home, the tower is remodeled with an atrium. Many suspect the new owners could be Reed Richards, remodeling it into the Baxter building of the Fantastic Four in the MCU. Peter collects Star Wars stuff, including the at, -AT at at both, all right, let's leave it at that, showing how he thought of the Empire tow cable trick in Civil War. Beside the Thai place is the Korean Church of Asgard, interesting, and the news footage shows a file photo of Spider-Man coming out of a porter potty in Far From Home. A fan actually prints this out for him to sign. Ned pesters Peter about his powers. Can you spit Venom? Can you summon an army of spiders? No, Ned. The Sokovia Accords were put into place in the way- How far can you shoot your webs? Yeah, spitting Venom, maybe like Peter in the comics, symbiote spitting off him onto Eddie Brock. There is also a comic where Peter summons a spider army, and he probably got the teacher lecturing about the Sokovia Accords, the ones from Civil War, and Ned mentioned standing on a ledge and shooting the web as far as he can, like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, but uh, who knows what that girl in front of them thought they were talking about. Yikes. They watch the Captain America Fitness Challenge, my fourth favorite Captain America film. Pretty sure this guy's a war criminal now, but whatever. I have to show these videos. It's required by the state. Let's do it. Earlier, this gym teacher 
chatted with Principal Morita, Kenneth Choi, who also played his grandfather, Jim Morita, Cap's Talon Commando's buddy. He has a photo of Jim Morita in his office, along with his medals and dog tags. So I'm guessing Morita's on Team Cap and wants to keep showing these videos. Cap actually shows up in a detention theme video later and in the second post credit scene. In all of these, he's wearing his 2012 era suit, suggesting he recorded these between Avengers and Winter Soldier when he was at the peak of his Boy Scout unwavering patriotism. The girls have a totally normal schoolgirl chat. Now see, for me, it would be F Thor, marry Iron Man, and kill Hulk. Mm. Well, after what Hulk did to Harlem, I don't blame them. And Spider-Man being burned under the mask, it's kind of a dig at Deadpool, whose face is scarred under the mask from Weapon X. You look like an avocado. Had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Yeah. Aunt May's car license plate reads AMF 15, a nod to Amazing Fantasy 15, Spider-Man's first debut in Marvel Comics. Peter Foyle's Bryce's arm deal with Aaron Davis, Donald Glover, one of the many community cameos in the MCU, and voice of the animated Miles Morales. Now this is crafted from a reclaimed sub-Ultron arm straight from Sokovia. You got uh, Black hole grenades, Chitauri rail guns, anti-grav climbers. No climbers? Yeah, his weapons are from the Ultron centuries, and black hole grenades are from the Dark Elves and Dark World, but Aaron is into the Climbers, a nod to his Prowler identity, and Bryce's Shocker Gauntlet was crafted from Crossbones Gauntlet in Civil War. Peter slides over a car with the plate ASM-267, a nod to the Amazing Spider-Man 267, in which Peter's in the burbs. We get a Ferris Bueller reference, and the Vulture grabs him, briefly framed in the moon, creating the Batman logo for Michael Keaton's past role in Tim Burton's films. He also played the Birdman, guy loves wings. Peter's saved by the Iron Man Mark 47, upgraded from the broken Mark 46 in Civil War. It's remote control to notice how it continues to mirror Tony's gestures as he's talking remotely from India. Tony shows how his suit has a tracker chip and heaters, the latest example of how Tony makes upgrades to fix past mistakes. Heaters after nearly freezing to death in Iron Man 3, and a locator chip after misplacing old Run. On the DC trip, their school bus passes a roadwork sign mentioning Triskelion cleanup, referring to the Project Insight wreckage from Winter Soldier. Toonscrew actually brings it up again along with Lagos from Civil War. The gauntlet from the Lagos cleanup, the rest is all mine. Whoa, that's so cool. I can't believe they're still cleaning up that Triskelion mess. And in a deleted scene, their bus actually passes the Triskelion with a helicarrier crashed into it. They're still cleaning up from when Captain America took down those skycraft carriers for no reason. I'm pretty sure Cap was just trying to save us from tyranny. Yeah. That's what they want you to think. Peter also answers a trivia question. Uh, strontium, barium, vibranium. What are two actual alkaline metals and an Easter egg fictional one? Ned has a laptop sticker for the subreddit RPC Master Race. True guy in the chair. Tomorrow's Rogue Theory will actually explore which characters in Peter's orbit, Ned, Flash, MJ, might get adapted into spider heroes or villains in future films. Be sure to check it out. Peter's suit AI named Karen is voiced by former Betty Ross, Jennifer Connelly, who in real life is married to Paul Bettany, who before Vision played the less robotic AI Jarvis. The heads up display shows how much webbing his shooters have depleted. And that number ticks down throughout Peter's hours in the suit. And here he deactivates instant kill, but he ends up using it in Endgame. In the vault, Peter finds this metal ring. This was actually the turnkey that Ultron rigged to drop Sokovia. There's also an Ultron head with its eyes glowing red, which in that movie did signify when the sentry contained Ultron's consciousness, possible clue that Ultron lives. And we are still living in his age. Peter tests out out his ricochet web and web grenade, which along with the taser web are all functions he uses later. Ricochet web to catch the elevator, web grenades on the ferry, and taser web against tombs. Activate taser web! Uh. Peter runs past the same reflecting pool where a cat laps Sam and Winter Soldier. Don't say it. Don't you say left. Come on! And this Washington Monument rescue is a nod to the battle with the Titanium Man in the Road to Civil War comics. His eyepieces glow red just a little to indicate when he's using his X-ray function. And when he uses his chest drone, the drone camera heads up display has a little A113 Easter egg. It's the CalArts classroom. You should know by now. And of course, he misses his chance to recreate the upside down kiss from the Toby Spider-Man. When Toom sees his news footage on the rescue, there's a flash of panic on his face, which we later learn is because his daughter Liz was there. There's another clue on the edit here. We cut straight from his face to his wife hugging Liz. In the Midtown News report, behind Jason is a screen showing the word vision, which is actually a nod to the Brooklyn Vision Academy, the high school that Miles Morales goes to. Peter retrieves his web fluid hidden under the lockers, 
Notice the scratch marks on the wall beside the locker. These are from past times Peter lifted it. Karen shows Peter his recordings. It is I, Thor, son of Odin. Notice how Peter's heart rate jumps from 84 to 93 from the shame. Aaron Davis's rap sheet lists his aliases, The Prowler, of course, and Brian Pincelli, a nod to Ultimate Spider-Man creators Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pincelli with pinch thrown in there as a thieving pun. Aaron's license plate reads UCSM01 for Ultimate Comic Spider-Man number one, the debut of Miles Morales, whose MCU existence Aaron alludes to here. I don't want those weapons in this neighborhood. I got a nephew who live here. And in a deleted scene. Yeah, sorry, Miles, I'm, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah, I'm just stuck. On the ferry, we meet Matt Gargan, who has a scorpion neck tattoo for his identity as a Spidey villain Scorpion. He returns to the post credit scene with tombs in prison. Further back on the ferry are cars tagged SM1920, which could be a nod to Spider-Man number 20 when he fights a scorpion. The car parked behind him is tagged SM0563, which could be a nod to Spider-Man issue 5 released in 1963, which was Spider-Man's first run-in with Doctor Doom. And further back on the ferry is the long lost Howard the Duck Easter egg that I found. <laughs> HTD-003, the 2015 Howard the Duck issue three, which had a variant cover showing the orange Staten Island Ferry. Peter here uses the same web jump and roll move that Cap used on him in Civil War. See, Queens is following in Brooklyn's footsteps. He's following his gut, not his head, which is what angers Tony so much. The Chitauri tech severs the ferry. You're messing with things you don't understand. The self-made villain warning the self-made hero about toys versus tech. A lesson that will get reversed later. Iron Man helps repair this with separate thrusters. I love how each one indents the metal on the fairy's hull. Tony takes back the suit. This is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. The one useful lesson that he learned from Iron Man 3. See, that movie wasn't unnecessary. Toombs is Liz's dad. Whoa. Great dramatic irony here as Toombs holds the knife. Echoing the Toby Spider-Man with Osborne carving the turkey, the stoplights, red glow, cast tombs in a menacing light, and then... Good old Spider-Man. The switch to green signals the Vulture heads-up display his coming battle armor in the final act. With his date, Flash mentions Branzino, maybe a nod to the Branzino dinner scene in The Amazing Spider-Man, and Happy loads the plane. We just gotta load Tony's old Hulkbuster armor, prototype for Cap's new shield, and the megging, the meg, the... Thor's magic belt. Now, the old Hulkbuster armor was the Mark 44 from Age of Ultron, but he says old, meaning a new one is in the works, which we'll find out is the Mark 48 worn by Banner in Infinity War. I fear the Hulk, not actually. Ah! Cap's new shield is one we don't see until Endgame, which replaces the damaged one in Civil War, and Thor's magic belt is Megangord. It's his belt of strength from Norse mythology and the Thor comics. Peter confronts Tombs, but he has not yet proven himself. Tombs stalls Peter while his vulture suit charges to surprise him, which is the same move used by Tony in Avengers, the self-made engineer on his enemy Loki, who at that moment considered his tech toys. Peter panics trapped under the rubble, and then he sees the reflection of the man without the suit, and he rises reflecting a visual from The Amazing Spider-Man 33. And he now fights a villain as the self-made hero. Not spoiled by overpowered Stark tech, but in the DIY hoodie inspired by the Ben Riley suit. The aerial battle reflects his transformation with the cloaking panels in the Stark cargo plane reflecting his new color scheme as he crawls on the underside. And among the cargo is Tony's old Mark 42 armor from Iron Man 3, suggesting he kept another model around for, I guess, sentimental reasons after the other one's pieces exploded around Killian. Toombs jams his wings into the fuselage, breaking them, damage that Peter later notices. You wish it. You wish this gonna explode! I'm trying to save you! See, in Civil War, Peter witnessed what happens when a guy gets stuck in a broken flying suit. Boom. That's right, Rhodey. Peter's Avengers training taught him the value of tech versus toys. And now, finally, as a self-made hero, he proves himself more worthy over the scavenger who stole tech and doesn't fully appreciate it. Peter oversees the arrest atop the Cyclone roller coaster, which came up in a memory shared between Cap and Bucky back in Cap 1. Remember when I made you ride the Cyclone at Coney Island? Yeah, and I threw up. Happy brings Peter to Avengers HQ, where Peter wears the same jokey Electron shirt that Pepper wore in Iron Man 3, though he just misses her here. Tony offers him the Iron Spider armor, which Peter will later wear in Infinity War. This is based on the armor that Tony gives him in the Civil War comics, as is the press conference that was about to happen here. But Peter, having learned the lesson as the self-made hero, turns him down, realizing that power isn't worth taking until one is ready for the responsibility of that power. There might be a better way to phrase that. So, Peter 
stays the one MCU hero who continues to hide his identity, though uh, not from Aunt May. What the f A line that gets called back as the final words of Far From Home when Peter has this happen in front of the whole world. Join our future watch longs on Discord by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash newrockstars. We'll wrap up on the MCU in a few weeks, but we plan to continue weekly watch longs with a new film series details to come. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe as we move on to see how not to treat your coworkers. <laughs>